NetJets, 25 hours at a time is back. I'm Doug Gollin. I'm founder and editor of Private Jet Card Comparisons. Thanks for watching. NetJets has introduced 25 hour leases. For the time being, they replaced NetJets jet cards, which the world's largest private jet operator suspended sales of back in August. Uh, we're going to tell you all about the 25 hour leases, uh, whether they're right for you, what you need to know, which aircraft that you can use them on. And I'm also going to tell you what I think is going to happen with, uh, with jet cards. Before we get started, I have a favor to ask. If you're a new flyer or an old flyer, if you're looking for quality content about private aviation from fractional ownership to jet cards and memberships, on-demand charter, jet sharing, buy the seat options, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel, give this video a like, and tell your friends. I promise there's going to be no internet clickbait. We're going to focus on quality content that's helpful for those of you who are looking to become more educated about private aviation solutions and find the best solution for your specific flying needs. So the NetJets 25-hour leases are a little bit different than the jet cards. Um, it's a five-year commitment. Uh, with the jet cards, you could buy either 25 or 50 hours. You had to use, them, uh, use those hours uh, within uh, 24 months. Uh, the NetJets leases are 25 hours per year, and it's a five-year contract. So it's a five-year commitment uh, for the NetJets leases. Uh, if you don't use the 25 hours in a year, you're allowed to or you're able to carry over unused hours to the next year. And according to what they're um, uh, telling subscribers of private jet card comparisons, the NetJet salespeople are telling, uh, telling uh, uh, potential customers for these leases, um, they will also be able to buy extra hours. So if you need more than 25 hours, you'll be able to buy extra hours. That will be at a slightly higher rate. So it's a five-year commitment. Uh, you're buying uh, 25 hours per year. What type of aircraft can you lease in the 25-hour per year increments? Uh, it's not the entire fleet. Uh, the, the globals are not part of it. Uh, the specific aircraft that you can lease is the Phenom 300, which is the NetJets light jet entry. Uh, the Citation uh, XLS, which is a mid-sized jet. Uh, then you also have the Citation Sovereign uh, and the Challenger 350. Those are both super mid-sized jets, uh, so both are good for uh, transcon flights. And then the largest uh, jet that you can take on the 25 hour per year lease is a Challenger 650. And so that's a large cabin uh, uh, aircraft. It's got the range to fly from the East Coast uh, uh, to Europe. Where can you fly with the, uh, the, the NetJets leases? Well, each aircraft has a primary and extended service area. And so the primary and extended service area for the NetJets leases uh, mirror what the previous jet card uh, service area was and uh, also with the fractional and the uh, uh, traditional 50 hour plus uh, uh, leases are. So uh, one of the uh, sweet spots for NetJets uh, in terms of uh, cost benefit is uh, uh, they do not have uh, surcharges for the Caribbean, Mexico and Canada. Uh, they have international fees and some fees that are pass-alongs, essentially. Uh, but some jet cards, uh, as you probably know, have uh, uh, surcharges that can go anywhere from uh, 10 to 50 percent or more. And quite a few jet cards uh, don't even give you the fixed one-way pricing when you get outside of the Continental 48. Uh, what's another sweet spot for the NetJets leases? Well, with the XLS, uh, which is a midsize aircraft, and then the Phenom 300, which is their um, uh, light jet entry, there's no daily minimums. Uh, and so most jet cards, uh, as you probably know, have uh, 60, 90, now even uh, more and more 120-minute minimums on light and midsize jets. And so 
if you're making a 25 minute flight, Westchester County to the Hamptons, or maybe from Chicago up to uh, Door County in Wisconsin, or uh, from Los Angeles to Palm Springs, uh, those 20 or 25 minute flights are billed at 60 or 90 or 120 minutes. So they're not necessarily very cost effective. On the Citation XLS and the Phenom 300, there is no daily minimum. So they're just gonna bill you for that 25 minute flight, 25 minutes of flight time, the actual flight time, plus 12 minutes of the taxi time. So NetJets is often uh, one of the, the, the least expensive solutions for those short flights. They're also, uh, they can be very cost effective uh, for the flights when you're getting outside of the continental 48 states. And then, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people uh, uh, are willing to pay the premium for NetJets because it is NetJets. Should you uh, consider uh, doing one of these 25 hour leases? Well, obviously, you know, it's a great way uh, to uh, access NetJets. Uh, I know a lot of subscribers were highly disappointed when NetJets uh, created the wait list and they uh, haven't been able to renew their uh, NetJets check cards. Um, this is more restrictive. It's a longer commitment. Uh, NetJets in, uh, in uh, promoting or uh, uh, announcing this, at least uh, in the emails that I saw to customers, uh, talked about their commitment to buying new aircraft and that they're looking for a longer term commitment, hence the five years. Um, I think the biggest uh, issue is going to be the 45 blackout dates and the peak days. So that's 90 days of uh, either peak day restrictions or uh, blackout days. So um, it's going to be a, a solution for people who have some flexibility. Um, if you've got kids in school and you have to travel on certain dates, um, you know, obviously, before you make the commitment, you're going to want to see what the peak day and the blackout calendar looks like. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, I understand is, you know, if demand uh, slackens off and things change, uh, that calendar could be adjusted downwards. So, you know, in the future, maybe those uh, blackout days become peak days or uh, some of the peak days are uh, removed. But I think that would be the biggest consideration. Uh, I think the other thing, too, is going to be what type of flying do you do? Um, with NetJets, you can downgrade. There's an interchange fee. Upgrades are not guaranteed. Um, so depending on what type of flying you're do, doing, uh, you definitely want to get the card that fits those flights. Uh, you're not going to want to, uh, or I should say, you're definitely going to want to get the lease that fits those flights. You're not going to want to have to worry about upgrades, and you're not going to have to pay, want to pay the uh, interchange for the downgrades. You may find that it makes sense to uh, do uh, leases of two different aircraft types, you know, if you have two different types of uh, flight profiles. So will the jet cards ever come back? Is NetJets going to uh, bring the jet cards back? Well, since they suspended sales of the jet cards last August, they've been adamant uh, that they are bringing the jet cards back uh, in an uh, email that they sent to uh, customers back in December. They said that they expected to have their full lineup of uh, the products uh, back in the market uh, by uh, the middle of this year. Uh, and uh, I don't think jet cards are gonna make it. Um, personally, I think these, uh, the five year or 25 hour uh, uh, per hour uh, uh, per year leases are um, uh, somewhat of a trial balloon. Uh, obviously, NetJets only has so much inventory to sell. Uh, they can only sell based on the new aircraft that come into the fleet and then the shares that they buy back and that they own uh, uh, is typically the uh, inventory uh, uh, that they use for jet cards. So after fractional owners sell their shares back at the end of their five-year contracts, that inventory becomes jet card inventory that they then repackage in the 25-hour jet cards. Uh, so, uh, you know, when will jet cards come back? I, I really think it depends on how much inventory they have. If they're able to sell their entire inventory uh, in fractional ownership and leases, the traditional 50 hours plus, 
And then if there's enough take up with these 25 hour leases, they may just not have a jet card inventory or it could be very limited. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please subscribe. Also, please visit privatejetcardcomparisons.com. Sign up for our free e-newsletter and learn more about how we can help you find the right private aviation solution for your unique flying needs.